Very good evening, no time to waste. What haven't we got on the agenda this evening? We've got uh, athletics, we've got football, cycling, yeah, in quite a big way, cycling. We've got rugby league, uh, we've got boxing, any number of sports, and of course, football as well. Uh, the reason for the diversity is that I'm delighted that for the second time here on Sheffield Live TV of a Thursday night, we're in the presence of the former Minister of Sport, Richard Caborn, former Sheffield MP, one of Sheffield's most famous sons yeah. indeed, more accustomed to the kind of questioning he gets on question time <laughs> than the soft, gentle <laughs> deliveries I shall be uh, pinging his way this evening. But there will be one or two toughies, uh, particularly about the crisis affecting Sheffield Eagles just now. And we really need to talk about that. He's got a major sports dinner coming up. And I'm also in the company for about the 15th time <laughs> of uh, Chris Holt, uh, senior sports journalist at the Sheffield Star. Good evening, Chris. Nice Good of evening. you to join us. And of course, I'll be throwing everything owls and blades your way. But of course, Richard, uh, one or two of those questions will come to you oh, because you're a, proud, <laughs> yeah. you're a proud blade and there's the tie. Okay. To prove it and enjoying life at the moment. Absolutely. At the moment, we are not the first yeah. first couple of weeks into the season, but we are now off the bottom in the playoffs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, the reflection of that was Pete McKee's cartoon in my column in the Sheffield Telegraph yeah. today. You know, Blades actually enjoying and smiling <laughs> yeah, at the yeah, game. Yeah, That's a rare experience yeah, indeed, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, well, in the beginning, season, but it's great now. Great now. Yeah. yeah. And of course, you've got uh, one of the reasons he's here. That, you know, he gets a free plug for a sporting dinner, and then we get to. Uh, <laughs> you know, get to the serious questions. <laughs> yeah. You've got a big sporting dinner, and Sheffield Celebration of Sport dinner on October the 5th. Yep. What's that, a week on Wednesday? A week Wednesday, yeah. A week, a week Wednesday, we, it's there. And really, it, it, the, the, the 5th of October was set, Alan, because Seb Coe's in town, and Seb is here to open up the uh, the National Centre for Sports Exercise Medicine, which is the development, for those who know it, at uh, Graves, that, that de development, which uh, is part of the Olympic legacy uh, yeah. from 2012. And in there are 19 consultancy rooms. It is about actually bringing the, the health service into uh, the recreation and, and sports arena so we can actually use physical activity in a very practical way to help people. There will be referrals from doctors, there will be discharges from hospitals, the general public can use that. And it's really about getting Sheffield to move more and move more often. We all sometimes mm. call it the miracle. Physical activity is a miracle cure, and to some extent that's true except you've got to make sure that happens. And that will link in then. Uh, there'll be five of those centres eventually around the city, and that will link into the Advanced Wellbeing Research Centre, which uh, on the 5th again will be, uh, uh, will be laying the foundation stone. And as we all know, the, U the University Technical College has opened up on, uh, on uh, uh, that uh, sciences and so on. There's a lot more than sport involved in the Olympic legacy project, I, I do know that. Yeah. But just reel off some of the names who are coming to your dinner. This is this is going to be in the middle of the track. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's going to be unique. I mean, we, yeah. we, we're up, about, there'll be about a thousand guests there, and we just thought that to, to celebrate Sheffield, because if you think what Sheffield sports done with Joe Root, the best cricketer probably in the world, you've got Danny Danny Willis, who did, the, did obviously the Masters, and then you've got two great footballers uh, with uh, Kyle, Kyle uh, uh, Walker, and then you've also yeah. got uh, down, at the, uh, down at Leicester, and then you look at what we've done at the Jamie, Olympics. Jamie Vardy's uh, success. Jim Varney. Yeah. And then all, all the success we've had, uh, and, and obviously Kel, Kel Brooks, I mean, yeah. fantastic, you know, fight and, and, and really put Sheffield on the map. And then obviously what we've done at the Olympics. So mm. we thought there's not many cities no. can actually boast such a widespread of sport. So we thought on the day we'll celebrate it. So we've got a thousand, and then. We, we've got about 40, probably 40, 50 Olympians come in. Uh, we, you know, uh, people like Brownie Page, who was fantastic, got the silver. At, at, uh, uh, a lot of the boxers, Anthony Joshua's coming there as well, and the boxing squad coming down. But we've also got uh, John and Sheila Sherwood's come in. We've got uh, Roger Taylor's come in. Uh, we've got uh, Peter Elliott's come in. So we've got a real span of Olympians and sports people past yeah, and present. Yeah, it's fantastic to hear some of those names as well. Some people will not be familiar with that. Actually, John and Sheila Sherwood well, back in the 60s, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. medalists in, I'm trying to Mexico. think, Mexico. 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 68. Yeah, 68. 1968. Yeah, yeah. Now, before your time, oh, Chris. Time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he came, he came, and, and, and they, both, they both medal. 
world. And uh, Roger Taylor was a, t a famous tennis yeah, player again yeah, in the yeah, 60s. Yeah, like Roger, 60s. yeah, yeah. So it'll, yeah. Be, it'll be a great... Now, Peter, Peter Elliott, obviously, he medaled More as well, recent. you know. Yeah. So, uh, uh, and a lot of those... Oh, Dickie Bird's coming as well. Oh. We've got, we've got anything, we've got a big Dickie, haven't we? So, uh, Dickie I presume Bird's he's coming. paid for his ticket. Uh, no, he's my guest. <laughs> <laughs> and Brendan Bre 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 Ingalls and Alma's coming as well. So, uh, yeah. it, it, it'll be a great celebration of sport. We do some awards there. But we're also trying to show where we've come, uh, you know, down at the Olympic Legacy Park from what was a steelworks right through to probably some of the most sophisticated uh, sports science and sports medicine yeah. that's been developed, which has put many on the medals. Uh, OK, we'll right. break that down later in the second half of the programme, what you've got there, what it offers, yeah. etc. Yeah. But the, conspicuously lacking, really, yeah. uh, from Sheffield's celebration of sport is major success on the football field, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it, it is disappointing, really, whenever you... We, especially with having the, the EIS here and you see you know, some of the biggest names of sport in the country, if not the world, coming through, coming through the city here. Yeah. And we don't really have that many footballers that are coming out, which is, no. is odd for such a football mad city. Yeah, we need to correct that. But there is a feeling that we're getting closer and closer to it now. Sheffield went Sheffield United's revival. Sheffield Wednesday are a mean force in the championship. It will be. You've been to see Carlos today, Carlos Cavani. Yes. Um, erratic, I think, has been Wednesday's form this season. What vibe did you get today from it? Um, well, there's certainly no sense of panic, as you can imagine, because Carlos, I don't think there's any time he's ever panicked in any, no. under any circumstances. But, um, no, I just get the impression that he feels that things are OK on the pitch. They're just not quite going just as well as, they, as he hoped they would at this stage. Um, the big problem he seems to, to see is the, the the lack of goals, but not the lack of chances, which is it, it, that's keeping him up. Is basically what he what he's been saying, and that they they're still continuing to create chances, and at some point those chances will go in. He's keeping us guessing with his selections, though, isn't he? Well, yeah, and uh, I think he's keeping himself guessing as well. It, it's, <laughs> it, it, it's, he's got well a lot of players there vying for, for a few positions. You know, if you go through the team, the back four is probably um, picks itself. Yeah. The midfield, not quite so much, but you've got a couple there who are all but guaranteed a place. And then so there's probably, on any given week, there's probably six positions up for grabs for, for each game. Well, we were talking uh, during the week, and essentially, most of the best team would appear to be most of the best last team from yeah. last season. Yeah, I, I would probably only put. At the minute, you know, going on the on the forum and what I've what I've seen so far, I would probably only put Fletcher and Adam Reach in, from the newcomers. From, from the newcomers yeah. as, into, um, into la the bulk of last year's team. And when players sign for a lot of money, they're expecting to play or be yeah. heavily involved. So it's a real difficult balancing act he's got, isn't it, Richard? I don't know if you've got any observations on what happens in the north of Sheffield? Not really. I, I mean, I, I must admit, I, I thought last season, I thought Wednesday did absolutely brilliantly. There's no doubt about that. And uh, when they go into the playoffs, and that, that, the match they played against Brighton, I thought the first match, the first leg, was absolutely brilliant. I mean, magical. you know, oh, magical. To think that they, what, and Brighton, what, they finished, what, 12 points in front of, well, something yeah, like that, yeah. I don't know what it was. Exactly, but a, a good chunk. To think that, you know, they went in and absolutely yeah. took them apart, there's no doubt. And, and they played, and it was fantastic football as well. Yeah. well. You know, it was really good. Uh, then obviously down at Brighton, watched that match as well. But, uh, but no, I mean, they, they, they did incredibly well. And one was thinking that they're going to get a flight of a start this season. It's not quite. Not quite being the you know the, the no. start that people are expecting. No, you know, sometimes it's hard to it's a hard yeah. act to follow, isn't yeah. it? Well, it is, and we, we spoke to Adam Reach today as well about yeah. at the press conference, and he he's been involved in in at Middlesbrough where you fall at that playoff hurdle, and then you've got next year to try and build yourself. Now I'm not I don't think there's any sense of a sort of hangover from the playoffs, no. but it, it does the the expectation level is probably the the most important thing Much because. The, 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 the fans all thought, you know, we've come so close and they've added to that. They've added yeah. what would, what on paper at least, would be better players than, than what were there. And, and people would have expected them probably to be higher up the table now. But it's very early days. It's a better division. They're, they're strong. Like, it's Rassen, such, it's such a strong, yeah. Lots of money I mean, it, it's, it's tough enough as it is. But then you've got, yeah. you've got three teams like Norwich, Aston Villa and Newcastle dropping down, yeah. added into the mix. It's just... 
Such a difficult division. It's, there's, a, there's a heavyweight in League One, uh, Bolton Wanderers, now then. Yeah, I mean, they're yeah, second yeah, in the yeah. table. Well, we played the first match. Yeah, yeah. and lost but unluckily. And lost, yeah, yeah. Uh, but Scunthorpe... They didn't play that bad, actually, but uh, but we lost lost out to them, yeah. And then Scunthorpe's now flying high, aren't they? Absolutely. Yeah. I was there the other night, though, yeah. and... Uh, I brought my jinx to bear, you know, I was at Oakwell <laughs> last Saturday and saw them lose 2-1 at home and now I was at Scunthorpe on Tuesday they only drew 0-0 with Charlton, Mind you, yeah. a strong club and team Charlton. Yeah. Uh, I didn't see anything much to fear there, Richard, no? to, be, to be quite honest. No, on the well, night anyway. Well, well, we'll see what happens on, on Saturday. Yeah. I was there, I was there Saturday watching watch, uh, Peterborough and I thought Peterborough on Saturday was a, were a good side. I mean, we won 1-0. Uh, we played very, very well. One of the best games of football I've seen down at Lane for for some time. It was it was a good game. Everybody said so, you know, and uh, and I think the officiating was good. The whole the whole atmosphere was good. But yeah. obviously, when you're on a bit of a roll as well, it it makes a difference, you know. Success beats success. And sometimes it's a blessing in disguise when you get over the hump if you have that bad start. Yeah. Because that must have, that must have given oh. Chris Wilder a sleepless night or no, two. No. It yeah. really, he never showed it. Yeah. It must have yeah. done. You know, a new, very popular yeah. manager. Oh, no, here we go again. Yeah. Well, again, uh, it's sort of, in a, in a sense, similar to Wednesday. People will have seen a new man come in, completely different to the to the previous manager. Yeah. You know, he, he's more sort of, I don't say in your face, but he's, he's a bit more old school. Yeah. There's no sort of messing around with, with philosophies and, and motivation. It, you know, it's this is what we're doing. This is Sheffield yeah. United, and this is how we're going to do it. Yeah. And, and the fans wanted that the fans yeah. wanted somebody on the yeah. sidelines who was just like who somebody sitting next to them in the on the cop or whatever yeah. and and when that just didn't quite work out straight away it it could have easily been demoralizing for chris because he's had this you know this is a job that he's wanted he's wanted yeah. you know he'd, and it hurts more when you yeah of course and so whenever <laughs> whenever it hasn't whenever it took that that bit of time but the, the best thing about it was he immediately identified where he was where he was lacking. Yeah. He saw those few games. He saw they were conceding goals. The way, the manner, yeah. the way they were conceding them. Um, they maybe weren't creating enough. Billy Sharp wasn't getting on the ball as much. And he's brought in players to help Billy. He's brought. He's tightened up the yeah. defence. And creatively, they've yeah. they've been a lot better as well. Yeah. So, you know, th I think that's the most important thing that he that he saw what was wrong very quickly, and he's turned it around. And now they're on a roll. OK, more, more football chat as we go on in the programme. Also a great cycling story from the former Minister of, uh, of Sport going back some years. And a, a, a conversation you had that turned out to have great significance in terms of our medal halls uh, over recent years. But I'm going to have to tackle you on Sheffield Eagles because, yeah. you know, we, we've got this proud city of sport, this celebration, uh, dinner that's coming up. And yeah. certainly they've been part, part oh, of it. What they've achieved yeah. 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 on so little has been phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and they've got this crisis fighting for their very existence at the moment. Now, can you help them? Uh, I well, mean, you were supposed to help yeah, them. Well, we are helping them. There's no doubts about that. Uh, and we will continue to help them. And I'm hoping that we will find solutions to problems. And Eagles will be played, uh, hopefully, down at the Olympic Legacy Park uh, next season. There is no doubt that the playing surface that we're putting in down there, which is under construction now, has been designed around rugby, both codes, union and that, because it has to be a runoff and it also has to have impact uh, uh, in, in it as well. Uh, so that will be, that is being laid. The floodlights will be there, the fencing will be there. So as far as that infrastructure part of it's concerned, uh, it, well, what we are short of is being able to put round that a uh, uh, the stands and the facilities for for the uh, uh, for the for the sport to be played there. Now the difficulty was that in the early days when we launched it all, we had a big investor, and they, they, he came along and got involved with the Eagles. We got involved, uh, obviously, in dealing the real estate. We we're going to have a hotel there and a stand linked into it and that. And that didn't work out, uh, and the investor then moved on. There were difficulties, say, he was saying that we need to have all, the whole of the pitch developed rather than just the part that he was doing. That was, we couldn't raise the money to do that, uh, and so there he was. What he did then, though, uh, Alan, as well, was to put all the players on full-time contracts. So they went mm. from part-time contracts to full-time contracts. Yeah, yeah. And there is a difficulty with rugby league particularly, and rugby is a tough game, and they only play 16 home matches. So if you think, 16 home matches is, well, probably 20, 25 hours of rugby a year. Mm. So you predicate a big building on the back of 25 hours rugby a year on a park, 
it's not an easy one. And that's why I was all, we've always been saying that you've got to have some activities that's going to actually effectively subsidise what's going on in the park. Yeah. The two things got to work, so we're going to get them. Can you do that? Well, I th I, I'm hoping we can do that. Uh, the difficulty was that the, the, the investor walked away. Uh, to be fair to that investor, he walked away, he went right off all the debt, so it's debt free. So that's very good as far as Eagle's concerned. They don't carry much debt, a little bit of debt, but not, not much. Uh, not like you did, with, for example, uh, with the ice hockey Steelers. You must speak to, yeah. to Tony Smith there, and when he inherited that, he got a lot of debt to sort out. Yes. So, uh, but then the, the difficulty is, if they do go into administration, they go down a league, mm. that, but they dropped out of the top four as well, mm. and that is another quarter of a million quid or something in yeah. that order as well. But we are trying to find uh, investors. There's one, uh, one's come in now saying that he wants to build a power station and then invest in, into the Eagles. Uh, there's others that, uh, others that are, I've got serious discussions as well, wrong for me to, to name them here tonight, but there are still discussions going on to try to, somebody, to get somebody to come in and uh, Supposing and there involved. isn't, supposing that there isn't an investor, yeah. Can you then still be confident that Sheffield Eagles will be playing well, at the Olympic if, Legacy Park yeah. next season? The worst case scenario, the worst case scenario that you would have is that Eagles would drop down yeah. a league. Having gone into administration. Gone into administration, be. yeah, because that they automatically once you yeah. do that, you go to I mean, uh, that would mean that you were playing a lower league where you wouldn't need to have the type of facilities that you delete in in, in, the, in the division one and then in the the Super League, so you could start, you could still play rugby, Sheffield League could still play there if it was a league below that. Now, that, nobody wants that. We don't want that. We don't, we don't want that. But if you ask me the question, you ask me the question, yeah. can Eagles play there next season? The answer to that is yes, they could. Well, it's a lower league, mm. whether well, it's without the facilities around it. No. What we are looking for is how we can bring together different sports who are going to perform on that surface because as I say you've got one of the best better than Saracens which is the 3G pitch yeah. to subsidize yeah. the Eagles you're yeah and, and 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 well at least put the critical mass because what you need to do you need to get a, 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 a facility up and running where Eagles can then rent that mm. for their games yeah and get their corporate hospitality in there where it's not a big burden so yeah. that is what we're trying to find and match together it's been unfortunate we've had one investor who was there for some period of time pulled out yeah. we've now another investor who's looking to build in a power station which are not the easiest things to get clearance for power stations on planning I can assure you I should think not yeah. so therefore there's a yeah. cross subsidy there uh, but there's others in uh, there's others are being discussed as well and you know uh, you know um, uh, people like John Whaley and, and, and obviously uh, Mark Ashton uh, you know are, are great people you know there's nobody better than Mark Ashton in, in rugby league in my view his vision of what he's trying to produce in Sheffield in the schools you know getting young people mm. get off the streets into sport and a tough sport like that is incredibly commendable and many of us are still wanting and still support him obviously and mm. we'll try and get a solution to it because yeah, at the moment it's about survival carrying on for next week and the week after and they're it trying is. to raise 20,000 pounds yeah. I believe they've got 11 which is yeah. a fantastic yeah. effort already and John yeah. Whaling yeah. who yeah. may well be in the studio Studio actually talking either yeah. next week or the week yeah. after. But the other thing as well, that. the chairman's gone in in uh, as well, and he's been a fantastic guy for that for that club. He stood behind Eagles yeah. through thick and thin for I, I don't know how many years. It's I don't know, is yeah. it 12, 14, 15, 16, yes. 17 years, something yes. like that. Ian, very quiet guy, but a fantastic now. For family reasons, he, he, he's moved on, and that is, and he was going to do anyway, irrespective of what happened. So, uh, so it's a couple of bits, I see. Yeah, some optimism anyway. You're always optimistic. You usually get I do, things I, done. Uh, yeah, I try, I try <laughs> to find solutions to problems. He's so. a blade. He's got to be an optimist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. By eternal, nature. An eternal optimist. An, an eternal, eternal optimist. optimist. Yeah, of course, more chat in the second part yeah, of the yeah. show uh, about football. Also about this kicking out today of this uh, plan. It was kicked around very controversially about the Football League having to incorporate or welcoming yeah, even yeah. Premier League B teams. Well, that's been booted off, off the agenda completely. Your reaction? Uh, to that and yeah. it seems that Football League won't observe a winter break even if the Premier League brings it in yeah. so we keep going because yeah. they're infernal aren't they these fortnight we just get going then we stop for a yeah. fortnight yeah. What, what else would we do and that's uh, what we do what, what, what else would we be doing if we have a break yeah I know exactly yeah. we don't want a winter break absolutely yeah. not and those of us who earn money from covering football matches particularly do not want a <laughs> winter break. So there, you can have a break of about five minutes now. <laughs> when you come back, as I'm sure you will, Richard Cable will still be here. So will Chris Holt. 
and James Gregg will be here with uh, a very diversive uh, football, well, no, sporting roundup. See you in five. <laughs>